What is going on everybody? It's always come back here with another video and today we are doing the Steelers seven round mock draft. This has been a long time coming. I think my last time I made it was back in like June or something. I've been meaning to update this for a little while now. Wanted to see how the Steelers were going to do and it looks like we're going to be around this projection for um, obviously this has is not updated after the Browns game which we should probably lose but I will be updating this once again after the postseason just because it's my favorite team. So I love doing the Steelers. Wanted to save them more for last at the end of the season. It's right before week 17 starts tomorrow. So if you guys are saying, oh, dude, the draft position is not reflecting what it actually is. I mean, it, it is, guys. It is. Trust me, it is. Um, that's just what it is currently. We are going to be changing it up a little bit. Plus, with all the picks that are going to be happening, I assume that it's probably not going to change exactly what we draft. So, without further ado, if you guys are new, hit the like button, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. We're over 1,400 subs, which is surprising because literally, what, two and a half months ago, we were at 100? So, you guys have just been eating this series up, um, as well as, obviously, my big seven-round or five-round mocks. Those things have been going off, which I really appreciate you guys for. But, without further ado, let's kick into this because I know I don't have too many Steelers fans on my channel, which is a little bit unfortunate. However... I do have some of y'all, and I want to make y'all please, just like I want to please myself. Uh, it's very interesting with our contract situation, how everything's going. Uh, it's, you know, it's not the best situation. Penny Suel falling to nine. We got to turn off the sound, boys. Apologies for that. Uh, we are going to be getting trade offers, but that's not going to happen in this draft because a little too RNG, if we're going to be honest. If we were to accept that trade, an interesting idea would be to take Cal Pitts, but, uh, I mean... I totally forgot where the hell I was going with that, but still, this is going to be a fun draft. We're at pick 28 here, which is awesome. Absolutely awesome. Um, so, Steelers, what do we need? Uh, this is an interesting spot, actually, because there's a couple dudes. Also, Kadarius Tony is not a first-round pick. I don't know what the hell TD ends up up to. I know, you know he might be a first-round pick, which, of course, is their predictive board, but sure as hell shouldn't be a first-round pick. I don't think that he's uh, he can translate. Well, there's a risk of him not translating well. Uh, there's, this is a pretty obvious pick between the top two guys left on the board. Obviously, Villanueva's on contract year, hasn't been playing the greatest either. You know, we've seen how Big Ben can play when there's no pressure on him. When he has a clean pocket, we saw what he could do to the Colts. He just lit him up, man. Uh, another idea, like, this is obviously a more far-fetched idea, and we're not going to be doing it. Even though, it, I mean, I wouldn't blame the Steelers for doing it. We don't have a second linebacker next, I mean, next to Devin Bush. I mean, Saban Collins and Devin Bush would arguably be the best linebacker duo in the NFL, and our defense is already great, but we do have, I think our big issue is on the offense, barring injury to the defense. Uh, Samuel Cosme, I mean, to me, he's my number three tackle in the draft. Christian Darsaw kind of jumped him in that, but I mean, if you're able to get the number three tackle in the draft, absolutely, right? He's very good in both the run and the pass game. Maybe he's a little bit raw, but I mean... The Steelers can definitely develop some line talent, right? Samuel Cosme is going to be the pick to uh, move on after Alejandro Villanueva. Even if we want to, uh, con like, what was I about to say? Franchise, uh, why am I saying, I was about to say franchise contract. Franchise tag him? Like, we don't, like, it's like you can't keep him long term. I love the guy. I love his story. True inspiration to be able to go to the military and stuff. He's an amazing person. But it, it's the NFL, man. It's your job. It's not really who you are. I mean, it is on the Steelers locker room. It is a lot about who you are, but you also got to play like it. And, oh, shit. We're at, we're, <laughs> oh, wow, okay. Um, I did not expect to be in this situation, all right? Uh, there is Sean Wade on the board, which we don't need a slot corner, but there is Tyson Campbell on the board. And, I mean, again, the Steelers did shy away from Georgia corners before, which is a big, uh, it's a big thing to know. We could be looking at the running backs as well, just to see, is there a guy like, we could take Javante Williams here. I'm not really for it. I know we need the run game like hella bad, but we do also need our secondary to be semi-youthful because Joe Hayden ain't going to last forever. And it's not every day that you get to take a project like Tyson Campbell. He has everything that you want. He, he might just be a little bit more of a liability and coverage to me. If you guys want to see, this is definitely not fully updated. Um, I have Sean Wade slightly ahead of him just because of the slot corner ability. But I have Tyson Campbell here at 52. So, to me, it's worth it. Uh, I mean, I really didn't expect to be in this position. I was probably going to take Javante Williams at this spot. If we could trade up, I would probably trade back up for Javante Williams. But this pick is just too good at the moment. We're going to go Tyson Campbell at this spot. 
Again, we just gotta we gotta make sure that secondary stays a little bit youthful, as well as the fact I believe Mike Hilton's on contract here. I'm not 100 percent sure on that. We might have re-signed him. Uh, again, just something that kind of flew through my head. We are not doing trades again, guys, just because a little too RNG with the series. And again, I would have traded back up there, and you know who could be on the board? I don't know if he actually went yet. I didn't pay good enough attention. He's not, but I would have definitely wanted to go. Um, we would have definitely wanted to go Javante Williams there. So Daz Newsom going in the third round. That's definitely interesting. Definitely something I would be 100% into. Tylen Wallace, I don't know if he would be a great fit on Oklahoma State, but you do you, boo. I wanted to see one thing, though. I mean, the Eagles wanted to trade back. Get out of here, bro. Uh, Eagles wanted to trade back, and Javante Williams already went I, mm, to the Jets. That would be interesting. That would definitely be interesting. I wouldn't blame him for it, but I'm not condoning it. Ooh, ooh, we have we have some good picks here. Okay, so Michael Carter is not a guy we're going to get, all right? I love Michael Carter to death. We don't need another scat back. We need somebody who's a true three down back. And if we're going to look at guys who are kind of like that, you want to look at a Trey Sermon maybe down the line. He could be a true stealer. If you want to get a Benny Snell 2.0, which we don't, Zamir White could be a good option here. Um, again, I think that there's just better options. If you want to go Demetric Felton, he's a guy who could probably play all downs. Like, I just think there's better value down the board. Even if you want to take, damn, Max Borgie. I love Max Borgie. Um, and then, of course, the most disrespected guy on this entire draft board, um, where is he? Ramondre Stevenson. Absolute stud. So we're not going to be taking that. There is a man who is somehow falling to us, and Jalen Tweeman. If we're able to pair him up with Stephon Tuitt, like, you remember when Javon Hargrave and Stephon Tuitt were there? Yeah, I do too. And, of course, he is a pit boy. We know that we love drafting some pit boys. I think this is worth it. I'm so happy uh, Tal Noah Hufanga is actually being respected now. He's been playing really well. I don't I don't get it. But we're definitely just selecting Jalen Tweeman to be on that defensive front, man. I'm telling you, we're able to uh, da -da -da, <laughs> to fix up our defense, both in the front and the secondary. Like, this team already has one of the best defenses. Now we're just adding some extra youth with Cam Hayward getting older and stuff. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you, this defense is going to be able to hold up the Steelers, regardless of the quarterback who is behind there. I, I mean, realistically, I think that getting a guy like Jameis Winston on maybe a one, maybe two-year contract wouldn't be a bad idea. But, uh, you know, it, it's always up in the air. You never know what's going to happen. Um, I'm excited to... I, I love this. I love this draft, man. I'm so excited to draft for the Steelers. It's been so long. Literally been so long. As my computer fan is, like, blaring in the background. But they're... Ooh, okay. So this might be where we're looking at a running back. We don't really need a wide receiver until later on, because if we need a slot, Elijah Moore is a really talented prospect. I don't know why he's being this disrespected. He won't be here in the draft. I can guarantee you that by how elite he has been playing. We don't really need an edge, because I think Highsmith, I mean, if you want to take a later edge just to add some extra rotation, I think Highsmith is someone who could develop into a really good prospect. We could even look at centers here. I'm definitely looking at the linebackers, by the way, guys. Don't worry. Uh, I mean, not linebackers, the running backs. But if you want to look for a center down the line, Tyler Linderbaum, who is not going to be there, but you never know. It's crazier things have happened. DK Metcalf fell. Uh, but looking at the guys who are available, like, dude, Muhammad Ibrahim literally said he's declaring to go back, so we can't take him. Uh, that's just ridiculous that they still have that in there. So it's not my fault. It's TDN for being unprofessional as fuck. It's just I, I can't really um, step in for them and be like, yo, don't do that shit. Uh, looking at the guys who are available, Kenny Gainwell is like really young. It's somebody if we want to take a shot on him, we definitely could. Uh, I mean, he is possibly a three down back. Mel Kuyper loves this dude. I'm not, I need to do more tape study on him. But I mean, Trey Sermon, he's been going off. Problem is he has a bunch of injuries and stuff. Is a little bit older. Chuba Hubbard as well. Uh, I mean, these guys are young enough to be a good starter on our team. But Kenny Gainwell has been the one who, I mean, he opted out as well. So he only has one year of real production. And then that was in his uh, redshirt freshman year. But he definitely showed out. So it's, def it's somebody who has youth and it's someone who can develop. You know, we do have McFarland who is much more of that scat back who can develop. But we've seen he's, he ain't that great. We're going to get Kenny Gainwell here just based off of the upside. That's it. Just based off of the upside. Um, it, it's a little bit unfortunate that we have to just go off of upside, but again, um, I'm going to trust Mel Kuyper in this situation that Kenny Gainwell is a very talented back. I mean, Mohamed Ibrahim would have been a fun guy to choose. He's a, more of a three down back, but for some stupid reason, he decided to go back. So, Hey, cheers to him. But Steelers, we still have uh, quite a few needs that we could go for. I'm pretty, I'm honestly quite surprised we have another fourth. If you guys can remind me who that was for, definitely do that. If you guys want to already move on from uh, 
from an Anthony McFarland, we could definitely do that. Is it Anthony? Yeah, it is Anthony McFarland. Uh, if we want to get more of a like a strong safety type, it depends if you guys think that we could re-sign Terrell Edmonds eventually. Uh, we could be going for a guy like Caden Stearns. He's not really as true strong, but he could definitely play that. Tyree Gillis, uh, Gillespie also is a strong safety. I like this idea of potentially having another linebacker on, on our squad. I mean, we could go back-to-back -back Georgia boys. Monty Rice is definitely a talented dude. You want to see, I mean, he is a senior. He's a little bit older. A uh, guy who I'm probably going to target down the line, though, is Quoney Dang. We like our, I mean, he is older as well, but that's somebody who we could target. Um, I mean, at this spot, the Steelers, we could look at wide receiver as well. If we want to develop a prospect, we could go for a Justin Ross. I'm just not 100% sure how realistic that is. Justin Ross will be here. It's just the spine surgery. You see, surgery um, on, with stinger issues in his shoulder. No, he has a spine injury. I literally read up on it. Idiots. But um, honestly, with a team like the Steelers, who were both in win now and in rebuild mode, we could be definitely looking at taking a guy here. Like, I, I don't want to check the trade scenario just because of the fact that I'm worried that he'll go into automatic um, picks where I can't choose anymore. But honestly, guys... If he is here, we're going to assume that the draft actually falls this way. Let's just get Justin Ross on the board. He can replace Juju Smith-Schuster down the line if we want him to. You just don't pass up on that. Him and Claypool, if they're able to be at full health, I mean, Justin Ross should be a top 10 pick in this draft, barring his surgery, of course. And that's what's scaring the shit out of a bunch of teams, and that's okay. It's 100% understandable. I'm going to be looking at a guy like Monty Rice if he does fall to us in the fifth. Um, of course, he, he won't, and he didn't, but that's okay. We are going to be looking at guys um, who can replace Pouncey as well at center. Uh, DeCastro is getting older as well. The problem with our line is that, I mean, like, you're looking at them, and they're a bunch of nobodies. They're starting to, like, f uh, filter in a bunch of nobodies who actually have enough talent to be starter worthy. Of course, we didn't have a round five pick. I love that. But still, um, I'm very happy I did not just, like, completely base my draft uh, strategy off of that. However... Oh, yeah, we traded the fifth for Avery Williamson. My bad. Uh, I mean, there's just... We kind of need to get some more bigger names in there to be able to protect a guy like Big Ben. Tommy Kramer was probably going to be my pick for if we wanted to get a guard. Um, ooh, Jarrett Patterson was the guy. As the computer fan goes off, you guys are know the notorious computer fan. But um, Steelers, we are here. J oh, man, that really irritates me, guys. Man, I really wanted to get Jarrett Patterson here. He's super young, redshirt sophomore. Really energetic. We can look at James Empey here, who, um, I mean, he is also a center who could definitely replace um, Pouncey down the line. We could also look at, I mean, Jim Morrissey is getting super disrespected here as well. I want to see where the hell did, um, I'm bugging on him, Tyler Linderbaum go. That is so unrealistic. The Cowboys literally just drafted a guy in the fourth round. Uh, looking at the guys who are on the board, though. Let's see if we can get some good some good talent here. Ali Gay is, uh, I'm pretty sure he's a true junior. Yeah, he's he's young. He has a lot of potential. If you want to get that uh, that type of edge prospect that is able to kind of add some versatility, add some depth as well, that's somebody you could definitely do that because he can also sit. That's going to be awesome. Tyreek Smith deserves to get a little bit more respect here. We're not going to be taking him because he's not going to be here during the draft, but especially after that Sugar Bowl uh, performance. So uh, given the fact that that's un extremely unrealistic, Ali Gay could be a very fun prospect. And if there's going to be a team that can develop an edge prospect, it is the Steelers. And LSU creates some very raw edges. But I'm telling you, if TJ Watt's able to teach this guy form and stuff, he's super young, super dynamic. Look at his size again. He is 6'6", 260. He has everything you want. This is a perfect round six steal for the Steelers. No pun intended. Uh, it's just it's a solid overall pick. You're going to be able to get about half val uh, half of a round value for him according to his draft value, according to TDN. But um, I'm very happy that Tutu Atwell is also great at this spot. Fuck, fuck you, Quony Dang. Can't believe he just went. Um, they had to, he had to go right before us, didn't he? Uh, we could be looking at guys. Um, Zay Collins is. I heard he's more like an undrafted guy. Uh, realistically, there's no other linebackers I would take in this draft. Uh, even like. Uh, Bernie here. I don't. I don't really like him that much. Zach McLeod's a really good run stuffer, but I don't think that we need that. We need to look look at the um, offensive line. And MP is still here. MP is a really. I mean, if you guys want to see BYU, you see like the widest open holes in like the history of mankind. I'm telling you, it's it's just ridiculous. We could be looking at Hansy here as well. I believe that he is also um, a center slash guard for Notre Dame. 
I'm going to be going MP, though. MP is a really talented player out of BYU. He's somebody who's going to be able to add some extra depth to that offensive line. And I'm telling you guys, with our injuries that we seem to get almost every year as well, it's really worth it. It really is. Um, Tutu Atwell in the seventh is a great pickup for the Seahawks. He's probably just going to turn out to just be like a shittier John Ross, though. Uh, Michael Penix Jr. was actually the guy I was going to look at to draft in the seventh, so that's a little bit unfortunate. Uh, but looking at guys who are available, I mean, I'm telling you guys, uh, he might not have the best head on him, but he does have the the raw tools to make into a solid quarterback. I don't know if Tanner Morgan is going to be returning, uh, but I definitely am looking at him as somebody who we could who we could draft. Uh, Zach Thomas is okay. Peyton Ramsey showed in his bowl game that he's actually pretty talented. Ian Book wouldn't be bad. Uh, Brady White is old as fuck. So we're going to be going Tanner Morgan here. Just get somebody better than fucking, uh, what's his name? I, I don't even want to think of his name. I literally just spoke it like uh, literally five minutes ago or ten minutes ago on a different uh, different video. But tight end wise, we can look at Luke Farrell here, who's probably going to be moving up. Cade Auten, who is I don't know why he is so disrespected. He's a really talented guy. He's a lot better than Zach Gentry. I'll tell you that for my, uh, like that for sure. Uh, with that being said, we got to go with him. Cade Auten is a stud. I don't get this. It really does. Like, let me let's see. Yeah, they don't have a freaking analyst report. They haven't even looked at him. So this is semi unrealistic. But we are going to be getting arguably one of my favorite tight ends in the class, Kate Otten here. Uh, he's just going to be a fun dude to add to, uh, like, Vance McDonald ain't going to last forever. And we all know that um, Mr. Drops himself is going to be gone within two years. But looking at the user picks that we did, uh, we got our future at the left tackle position. Samuel Cosme, wonderful run and pass. Tyson Campbell, true number one corner if he's able to develop. With our roster, he can develop that way, too. Jalen Tweeman, what a steal. Extreme upside. Love it to death. Kenny Gainwell, going to be able to possibly be a three-down back, something we've been dying for. Justin Ross, taking a shot on a dude who could potentially be, like, a number one wide receiver in the NFL. So, absolutely love that value pick there. Ali Gay, just a young prospect. Add some rotation depth there. James MP, be able to potentially succeed... Uh, Marquise Pouncey, I mean, we love to just have our dudes sit for a while, and BYU knows how to build some good run blockers. Tanner Morgan, better better than... I am bugging on his name. I hate Mason Rudolph. There we go. I hate that dude. And he's better than Duck Hodges, possibly, too. Tanner Morgan is somebody we should definitely look at. He might not be coming to the draft, and if he's not, that's okay. But uh, for now, that's the pick. Then Kate Otten, I mean, it's just worth it. Really worth it. So let me know what you guys think. I love it. I love it to death. Um, obviously, I would have loved to get us another linebacker in there. Maybe if you wanted to go tackle in the set, uh, in maybe the third. I mean, dude, all these these top three rounds were steals, all of them. So, I mean, I can't really blame any of you guys for not liking one of the picks, but I mean, I'm a fan of all of them. Let me know what you guys think. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you on the far side. Peace.